Hello and welcome back to the Houston Texans franchise. We're currently in second place in the division after last week's disappointing performance against the Titans where we lost 41 to 17. We do have a chance to bounce back this week though at home against the Broncos before we hit the bye week. But without a couple of starters, Charles Amenehu dislocated his shoulder in practice. He's gonna miss the game and Addison Middleton gonna miss three weeks with a broken thumb he got against the Titans. Dwight Devine has a bit of a fumble issue at this point in his career. Five fumbles, he leads the NFL. We gotta do a better job of protecting him in the pocket so he's not getting hit and losing it there. He has five interceptions, that's not too bad compared against the rest of the league. The goal here today is not turning the ball over and getting a win, so we head into the bye with some momentum. Texans are gonna start with the ball at their own 25. Devine, there on first down, he has James White on a wheel route. He's behind the Broncos defense and it's a foot race to the end zone. Nobody's gonna catch him. A one play touchdown just like that. Remember last week, James White's first touch was a fumble. Well, this week, it's a one play touchdown. Broncos defense aggressive here on the first play, sending an all out blitz and James White burns him on the wheel route. So trailing seven nothing after one play. Let's see what the Broncos offense as Javante Williams to carry up to the 23, a gain of five. There's a second straight carry for him, and he's up near a first down, up to the 27. Third and inches. A third straight carry for Williams. Stiff arms muse, and has the first down up to the 33. I guess they saw how bad the run defense was last week against the Titans, where Derrick Henry ran for 194 yards, four straight runs to begin this one, and just two there. Second and eight, this is carry on Johnson, a fifth straight run, the former Texan up to the 40, a gain of five. Third and four, they go empty. Bridgewater going right side for KJ Hamler, who's across midfield with a first down to the Houston 46. Williams the back again, gets the ball left side and he's stuffed by Michael Barr. Picking up just one. Second and nine, Williams again, a stiff arming Cunningham, but Cunningham hangs on and brings him down. Third down again. Third and five, Bridgewater underneath, that's Jerry Judy with a first down. Down up to the 28. Bridgewater two of two so far, both on third down conversions. Williams to the carry and a gain of two. Ross Blacklock injured on the play for the Texans. Second and nine, Bridgewater gonna throw it again. Going underneath, Jerry Judy brought down up at the 22. Third and four, Bridgewater has time. Going downfield, one on one for Guyton and he makes the catch. It's a touchdown for the Broncos as they answer back with a very efficient drive, ending on a Pass here to Guyton, one-on-one -on -one in the end zone with King, who is nowhere really near the play to make a play on the ball. Let's see if the Texans can get another one-play touchdown. They can't. Brandon Cooks spun down at the wide of scrimmage. Second and ten. Here's Damian Willis on the left side. Not much space. You know, just one. Third and nine. The false start on assembly is going to move him back. Third and 14. Vine has pressure coming, going downfield, and that's nearly intercepted. He was trying to get the ball to Adams. They're going to have to punt the ball here on fourth and long after a quick three and out. Javante Williams for the run and a first down, breaking a tackle up to the 47. He is a workhorse back for the Broncos when he is healthy. First and 10 here, pressure coming. He swings it out right side. Williams stiff arms Muse and out of bounds, gain of just one. Second and nine, Williams up the middle, staying up and going down. Finally at the 47 of Houston, our third down. Bridgewater going downfield, that's Noah Fant with a first down out of bounds at the Houston 30. Bridgewater six of six. I'm worried about how we're gonna try to slow down Noah Fant. Really tough to cover him with linebackers because they're not fast enough and the safeties aren't big enough. Williams with a gain of nine there. Bridgewater gonna throw it on second and one and he has all day moving right. Going downfield, there's three Broncos in the area. Noah Fant comes down with it. Wins the jump ball and gives the Broncos a lead here in the first quarter. Both of their drives have looked really good. And Bridgewater just has too much time. I don't care what quarterback you're facing. Any quarterback can make a play if they have that much time. Let's see if the Texans can move the ball here with more than just one play and get a touchdown on it. Lewis not going anywhere on first down. Second and ten. Vine going downfield for Adams into double coverage and he can't hang on. It's another quick third down. Third and 10. Pressure coming. Divine hits he throws. It's incomplete. So it's fourth down again. Another quick three and out. Some poor blocking going on there. Broncos take over at their 31. Bridgewater throwing on first down. KJ Hamler up to the 41. Already eight of eight for 101 yards. 
Williams with a first down on second and inches. 11 carries for him. Broncos are sustaining drives and keeping the Texans offense off the field. Really only had the one big play. Besides that, they've been shut down. Here's Williams with a carry on the left side on second and 10. Up to midfield, making third down a bit shorter. Third and three. The Texans send a blitz. Bridgewater stepping up and fires out of bounds. It's fourth down. And they're going to punt this away. Try to pin the Texans back deep to end this first quarter. And it's out of bounds at the four. Now the Texans from their own goal line, basically. Here's Willis trying to get some space up to the six. Second and eight to begin the second quarter. It's a read option into Vines going down. He didn't have a chance losing four back at his own one. Comes unblocked and just blasts Devine. Now it's third and long from your own one. They are going to throw it. Devine going deep downfield. One on one for Devante Adams and he makes the catch. There is a flag and it's roughing the passer. So the play stands. What a great catch. When you needed a big play, who else but Devontae Adams is going to deliver. An excellent job of Making a contested catch. Now we're at the Denver 37, just like that. The penalty and the big play. There's a carry for Willis up to the 26, a gain of 11. They're going to give it to him again on the left side. And he tries juking, but can't. In a six. Second and five. Light the back. And he's going to fake it to him and keep it. Divine trying to get to the edge. He has the first down. Spun out of bounds at the 14. First and 10, here's Willis, left side running into a defender, and he's going nowhere, dropped at the line of scrimmage. Second and 10, there's a false start moving him back, so it's third and 15 after the penalty and an incomplete pass. They just run it. They don't want to risk a turnover on third and long. Kick here from Fairbird on fourth is wide right. He misses it, so it stays a Denver seven-point lead, and they take over at their 25. Williams with a gain of nothing on first down. Carry on Johnson in the back on second. They can't get the screen pass to him, so it's third down quickly. He stays on the field on third, and they're going to go Noah Fant right side. Brought down shy of the first, so it's a quick three and out. The Texans get the ball back at their own 33 after the punt. James White cutting back up the middle in of eight. Second and two. He stays on the field, and they're going to give it to him again. Right side. He's up near midfield and spun on down with the first down. Two carries, 17 yards. They're going to RPO, throw it to the edge. Barnes can't get anything, though. Maybe a gain of just one. Second and nine. The read option keeper, Devine, has nowhere to go. He picks up maybe another yard, bringing up third and long. They go empty on third and eight. A blitz coming from the Broncos. Throw left side, nearly intercepted. Intended for Devontae Adams. Great coverage here, jumping this one. Don't know how he read that so quick. Booth booting it away here. On fourth down, trying to pin the Broncos back deep. It's going to bounce as a 10 and go to bounds at the 6. A great punt by Dom Booth. So the Broncos take over at their 6. Here's Williams with a carry on the left side, breaking a tackle up to the 11. Three and a half to go here in the first half. A throw on the left side. That's carry on Johnson out of bounds for the first down up to the 18. Williams to back here. They're going to swing past it to him on the left side. He runs through Jerron Curse up to the 24. Second and five. A handoff to Williams on the right side. He has a lane. A missed tackle. He's across the 40, stiff arming a defender down at the 42. Big play there. They're going to give it to him again. See if he can have another big one. He stiff arms another defender. That's high tower. Gain a four, though. It's now the two minute warning. Bridgewater has all day and a drop by Jerry Judy. Third down. They're going to hand this off on a draw. Javante Williams has enough for the first down, crossing midfield. To the Houston 47. He is nearing the century mark already in this one. Bridgewater just threw a lame duck there. Second and 10. Bridgewater moving out left. Nobody open. He throws it away out of bounds. Third and 10. Carry on Johnson's the back. They're going to hand it off to him on a draw play. It doesn't work this time. Brought down at the 42. Texans take a timeout. See if the Broncos can pin him back deep. No, they're going to fake it. It's a flip pass and it's not going to work. Garrett Wallow, known only as a backup slash special teams player, making the stop here. Worsen the turnover on downs. Now up near midfield, the Texans have a chance to get some momentum heading into half and maybe tie this one up. Divine a carry of not much, just four yards, second and six. One timeout left for Houston. Pressure is coming. Divine's going down back at his own 33. It's a huge loss. And that just killed the drive there. 
Probably just going to run it and try to get it to half. Yeah, they will. Willis not picking up much. Denver would take a timeout, forcing the punt. Dom Booth booting it away, trying to pin Denver back deep again. It's going to bounce near the 10 and roll favorably for the Texans down to the 9. And that's going to take us to half. The Denver leads 14-7 in this one. Texans haven't done much on offense besides that first play touchdown. Washington football team is up 16-0 on the Titans. We just got killed by last week. We'll see if they can hang on there. Let's get to the second half of this one, though. Denver starting with the ball, throw on the right side. That's Hamler spun on down up at the 40 with a first down. Williams the back. They're going to hand it to him. He has a lane on the right side across midfield to the Houston 47. 19 carries, 109 yards so far. Still a lot of game left, and he has another gaping hole and another first down to the 35. Now 120 rushing yards. Two tight ends on the field. They're going to throw it. Noah Fant with a reception inside the 30 down at the 23. Another first down. Denver humming along here on offense. Williams stuffed in the line of scrimmage by Ross. Blacklock, he's tired of these big runs. Second and 10. Bridgewater has all day against the Blitz. Going underneath, nearly intercepted, would have been a pick six by Reed. Third and ten. A chance for the Texans to get off the field. No pressure. Coming finally, Bridgewater throws it away, and it's going to be fourth down. Kick from McManus is right down the middle, so it is a ten-point Denver lead. They lead 17-7. to seven. Here's James White on the first play of the second half for this Texans offense. He picks up three. Second and seven. Pressure coming, Devine moving out right. Nobody's open. He's going to take off. He has the first down and more in front of him before finally going out of bounds at the Denver 40 with a huge gain. An awful double team block attempt up front leads to that immediate pressure. Devine having nobody open just takes off. James White delivering not one but two great downfield blocks. In Broncos territory, here's Willis on the right side picking up just two. Nine carries, 22 yards. The blocking just hasn't been there for him and it's not there on this play, gaining just one, another failed double team block attempt. Harris smashes Willis at the line of scrimmage. Third and seven. Devine moving backwards, throwing left side. He has Nico Collins inside the 10 and out of bounds at the Broncos six. It's goal to go for the Texans. They go power look here on first and goal. Willis gets the ball and he's into the end zone untouched, making this a one score game here in the third quarter. Broncos starting from there, 25. Here's a quick throw left side. Noah Fant brought down to the game of nine up to the 34. Second and one. They fake it to carry on Johnson. Teddy Two Gloves going right side. Noah Fant again up to the 46 with a first down. All right, keep on passing. Bridgewater has time. Goes underneath for Geitin, who has a gain of just three yards. Second and six. They're going to hand this off to Javante Williams, who has a running lane up the middle, stiff arming a defender before finally being brought down at the Texans 33. He's going to stay on the field. They're going to throw it, though, against the Blitz. Left side, that's their fullback picking up three. Second and seven. And off right side, Williams cutting back left and going nowhere down at the line of scrimmage. Third and seven, a chance for the Texans to get off the field. Bridgewater throwing left side. Noah Fant with a reception, but he's out of bounds short of the first. McManus going to kick it here on fourth down and... Make the field goal, making this a six-point Broncos lead. The Texans start from there, 23. A throw underneath for Sheldon Dillon, who's brought down up to the 31. Just 10 pass attempts so far for Devine. Here's Damian Willis up the middle with some rare good blocking on the day up to the 43. Second and 10. Devine running out of time, and he's going down back at his own 33. That's Bradley Chubb sacking him on the play. Third and 21. They fake the foot pass. Not many plays in the playbook for third and this long. They go downfield. It's incomplete. They're going to have to punt it away. Booth booting it away yet again, trying to pin the Broncos back deep for the third time this game, and he does, pinning him out of bounds at the four. Broncos go power look. Here's Javante Williams juking left and going nowhere, losing one on the play. Second and 11. Hand off to Williams at the middle, and he's down at the seven. Third and six. They go shotgun. Bridgewater has all day. Moving out right. Firing down the field in the double coverage, and it's incomplete intended for Guyton. They got to punt it away. 
Texans start from their 40. Great starting field position. Divine moving left. Nobody open. He throws it away out of bounds. Second and 10. This time, Divine has plenty of time, but nobody's open. He's going to try to get what he can and go out of bounds at the 46. Third and four. Divine tries spinning out left, but he runs into Bradley Chubb and has to throw it away out of bounds. The offense is staying on the field here on fourth down. Pressure coming. Divine, his he throws. It's incomplete. So it's going to be a turnover on downs. Denver defense with a huge stop. And they got a chance to make this a two-score game, but they're going to lose one on first down. Second and 11. Pressure coming again. Bridgewater downfield, and it's incomplete intended for Judy. Third and 11. A chance for the Texans to get off the field quickly. Bridgewater stepping up, going downfield for a carry on Johnson. He makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. It's going to be fourth down, and they're going to have to either kick a field goal here or punt it. They're going to try a long field goal. McManus's kick is hooking, and it's wide right. So it'll stay a six-point lead. And the Texans take over at the Broncos, 46. Willis, not much room there. A gain of just two on first down. Second and nine. They're going to throw it. Moving out right is Divine. Going downfield for Adams, and he's got him with a nice toe drag catch. Out of bounds at the 25. And it's a Houston first down. Denver would challenge the play, but they're not going to win this one. They're going to lose a timeout. They're going to hand this off right side for Willis. And he's going out of bounds near the first down at the 15. Second and inches. Pressure coming off the edge. They throw it right side for White, who bobbles it and makes the catch going out of bounds at the 18, losing yards on the play. Third and three. They're trying to get a screen pass to James White on the left side. He has the ball, but he's spun down, losing another yard. And it's going to be fourth down again. The offense probably going to go for it. They will. Fourth and four again. Pressure coming in in Divine's face. He lobs it downfield. He has Devontae Adams all alone, and he's into the end zone, tying things up here at 20 in this fourth quarter. What a big-time throw with pressure in his face by Divine floating it so Devontae Adams can run underneath of it. The all-important extra point attempt from Fairburn is drilled right down the middle. So it's a one-point lead here with just six minutes left in the fourth for the Texans. Bridgewater going to right side for Hamler, but that's incomplete. Second and 10 from the 21. Bridgewater underneath for Noah Fant up to the 26, a gain of five. Third down. The Texans don't send a blitz. Bridgewater has all day as Noah Fant on the right side with a first down up to the 40. Really should lean on Noah Fant. He is a big problem for this Texans defense. They have Hamler open over the middle, though, and he's crossing midfield to the Houston 46. They're going to hand this off left side. Carry on Johnson popped by Crisp. Again, just three. Second and seven. Carry on Johnson on a draw, and he's going nowhere. Ross Blacklock stopping him in the backfield. Third and nine. Bridgewater has time going downfield for Jerry Judy, and that's caught. But there is a flag, and it is holding on the offense, a big call in a big spot, but it was the right call. Third and 19 after the penalty. Bridgewater has time. Going underneath, that's on Johnson, and he's spun on down at the 46 of Houston. Charlie Heck, the former Texan, injured. McManus is going to try another long field goal here. For the lead, it's wide left, not even close. The Texans could try to run this one out with just three minutes. 30 seconds left here in the fourth. It's a dump off throw to Willis. Up to the 39 on first down. Second and two. A handoff to Willis. And he's spun down in the backfield. Losing the yard. That's Von Miller with a big stop. Third and three. The last play before the two-minute warnings. An RPO throw to the edge. That's Brevin Jordan fighting for the first down. Denver can only stop the clock twice now. Here now that the two-minute warning's happened, Willis getting the ball up the middle, trying to truck a defender. He has the first down, and there's Denver's second timeout. Grand off to Willis, right side. He runs through a Bronco up to the 15. Denver has to use their last timeout. Second and one. It's a fake. Vine moving out left. He's going to take off. He has the first down and slides down inside the five, and they can go victory formation, kneeling this one out. Taking the win 21 to 20. Time to take a look at the stats on the day. Teddy Bridgewater, 22 of 34 for 219 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. He was very effective throwing the ball. Didn't really get much pressure on him. 
Javante Williams, 26 carries, 141 yards, 5.4 yards a carry. At least he had no touchdowns. Noah Fant, 9 for 98 and a touchdown. Another tight end that absolutely obliterated our secondary. Dwight Devine, 11 of 21, so not too many pass attempts. 208 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. The more important thing today is that we actually got the win and we didn't turn the ball over. On the ground, 17 for 72 and a touchdown for Damian Willis. Devine, 9 carries, 57 yards, most of those coming on one big scramble. Receiving-wise, James White, 3 for 71, all those coming on one big reception at the start of the game, that first play touchdown. He actually lost more yards than he gained the rest of the way. Adams, 3 for 84, he was very effective when we targeted him. Ross Blacklock had four tackles for loss. He was really great. And so was Dom Booth. We can't forget about him. Five punts, downing three of them inside the 20, helping flip the field position all game long. Laramie Tunsil has an upgrade as we move on past the game. And we're going to go power here, hoping to make him even better than he already is. Our offensive line could really use a boost some way, and he gets a little bit of an attribute upgrade there, I guess. Don Booth has an upgrade after the big day punting the ball. Let's go accurate here and get the accuracy up due to that. It is the bye week now and we have a choice to either rest or have extra preparation. We're gonna go with some extra rest. I think that is the smart option, especially after we got the win. I think they earned it. They get plus two to injury and plus one morale going the rest of the season. Still during the bye week, we are looking at extending Charles Omenihu. He went up to star dev. This season, he has some very balanced ratings. He led the team in sacks last season with 10.5. He has 5.5 this year so far. And he started the season off strong with a sack in four straight games. We're going to offer him a $6 million deal for two seasons, and we see that he accepts. Moving back to some upgrades during the bye week, Tristan Hill needs to get better at stopping the run so he can see the field more often. So we go run stopper, and he gets a boost to just about everything, including block shedding. Nico Collins hasn't had too splashy of a season this year after a great last year. We're going to go route runner and make him more effective at getting open. He gets one to deep, two to medium, and one release. Garrett Wallow had that huge stop on the fake punt. We're going to go run stopper to get him even better at block shedding so he can be better on kickoffs and situational awareness, things like that. It's two to awareness, two to play rack. Jason Lashley. A backup third down back. We're going to keep going receiving back. Get his receiving skills up. He gets one awareness, one catching traffic, and one catching. Shaka Tony. I think we can keep going finesse here and make him even better at rushing the passer. So when he does see the field, he can maybe get some sacks or at least put pressure on the quarterback. Jacoby Stevens. He actually missed the last couple of weeks before this week with a broken finger. We're going to go pass coverage and make him better at it. He's already really good at it, but... Now he might actually see the field. Marlon Cumberland, the backup power back. Let's go power back to make him better at what he's supposed to be doing. And he gets one to awareness, two to break tackle, one to carrying. Jimmy Moreland, he hasn't had a great season so far, but he does have an upgrade here. He has better man than zone, so let's go zone to try to even things out. And he doesn't get the boost to zone coverage, unfortunately. We're halfway through the season, so it's time to look at some of the stat leaders around the league. You see Tom Brady leads in passing yards, followed by Lamar Jackson and Justin Herbert. Brady also leads in passing touchdowns by one over Herbert and Prescott. Lamar Jackson leads the NFL in completion percentage at 71%. Dalvin Cook, the NFL's leading rusher with 1,007 yards, followed by McCaffrey, Henry, and Elliott. Cook also leads in touchdowns with 14. The next closest is James Conner at 10. Yards per game, Cook of course at the top. McCaffrey, Henry, and Elliott also all over 100 yards. Allen Robinson leads in receiving yards and receptions by a pretty big margin. I don't know if anybody's going to be able to catch him at this pace. Touchdown leader, though, at C.D. Lamb at 10. Mike Evans down there at 8. Sack leader is Grady Jarrett at 9, but if you look down the list a bit, you'll see Ross Blacklock down there at 8. He's having a great year also. 18 tackles for loss, which leads the NFL. Surprisingly, Fairburn is not first in field goals made and attempted. That is Matt Prater. Don Booth, though, tied for the lead in punts down inside the 20 with Johnny Hecker. Booth having a big year. Dalvin Cook, your front runner for the league MVP, followed by Justin Herbert. Not too surprising to see those two at the top of the list. John Medlock in third place in the Coach of the Year race. We'll see if he can pull that one out. Dwight Defines in fourth place for the Offensive Player of the Year. Kind of surprising to see him that high. 
Ross Blacklock in first for the Defensive Player of the Year in the AFC. He's having a big season. Dwight Devine and Willis at first and second in the Rookie of the Year race in the AFC. We'll see which one comes out with that award. The AFC Rookie of the Year race is littered with Texans. Michael Barr, Ezekiel Mills, Adam Weiner, and Dwayne Crisp are all in the running. We'll see if any of them can come out with that one. Time to move on and do some scouting. We're looking at a draft story here. Tight end Allen Williams has NFL GMs a little worried about his long-term prospects. 6'6", 246, 23-year-old out of Boston College. A round three or four projection. Does have great elite strength, speed, and jumping. The skill set, we don't know too much about him, but might have some injury concerns. I don't know if we'll necessarily be targeting him or not. Opposing QBs are now targeting strong safety Deontay Jordan, a rapid fall down the defensive back rankings. Deontay Jordan, 6'2", 22-year-old out of LSU, a second or third round grade, has great elite speed, that's not too bad, has C-zone coverage, he might be worth a third round pick still, even if he does have bust written all over him by some of the scouts, I, I still take a look at him. We have even more upgrades to do, let's start with Ezekiel Mills and go run stopper, so maybe he can get on the field even more. And hopefully he gets some block shed. He does get plus one of that, plus three play rec as well. Adam Weiner has an upgrade. We could keep working on his pass rushing skills, but I think we're going to go run stopper because in both roles that he plays, he needs to be able to stop the run. I think that's a bit more important, especially after the last couple of weeks, the way the ground game has been killing us. Martin Boyce has an upgrade. We're going to, of course, keep going run stopper here. Get his block shed hopefully up. Instead, he gets plus three to tackle. Kenny Robinson Jr. has an upgrade, hasn't seen the field a ton. We're going to go hybrid, hopefully to make his man coverage a little bit better. He does get two to that, plus two tackle as well. Matt Skura, who's been starting at center in place of the injured Addison Milton. Let's go power. Hopefully he can actually hold somebody for more than one second. He gets one to run block and one awareness. Keon Crossan has better man than zone. Let's try to get the zone up. A little bit he does have great speed so it makes up for some of the bad coverage when he does have to see the field he does get a bunch of boosts there unfortunately we have even more injuries this week charles omeni has a dislocated wrist garrett wallow has a shoulder strain damian willis broke his finger and addison milton has to miss one more game with that broken thumb we're currently five and three we do lead the division the jaguars are now four and four titans also dropped a game we'll go into three and five we take on the raiders next week who are four and five themselves they've dropped three straight games but looking at their schedule it's been brutal they've lost to the dolphins chiefs chargers all by one score the dolphins are eight and one chiefs are eight and oh and the chargers are six and two so the raiders might actually just be a good team and add a really tough schedule Derek carr on the season 12 touchdowns five interceptions good for a 58 percent completion percentage he hasn't been great josh jacobs 728 yards seven rushing touchdowns they have a Pretty dynamic backfield, though, with three capable running backs. And at receiver, they got Renfro, Sutton, and Ruggs all out wide. Darren Waller, their tight end, another athletic tight end. We got to find a way to not get killed by. Defensively, they got a bunch of guys who can do a lot of things, rush the pass or stop the run. So it'll be interesting to see if our defensive line can hold up against them. Next time, we'll look to win two straight. As we come out of the bye, take it on the Raiders. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.